thank you, Rachel, and congratulations on five years of this wonderful series. This is my fourth and final in the flesh reading. I tend to read other people's erotica when I come here. I've read James Joyce, Sylvia Plath, and with Rachel's encouragement, I have read some of my own writing. But tonight, I'm going to do what I do best and read someone else's naughty musings. <laughs> the author I'm reading tonight will remain anonymous, and you'll understand why shortly. I won't be reading from his novel, but rather from some emails he wrote me. Oh. <laughs> lost my cyber virginity. <laughs> a few years ago, I reluctantly joined MySpace. I wanted nothing to do with it, but the Authors Guild newsletter suggested it might be good for book sales. I begrudgingly set up a profile. Admittedly, it only took a few days for me to decide, this isn't so bad. It was fun getting in touch with old friends, although I wasn't quite sure what to do with the strangers who contacted me. One day, a man sent me a MySpace email and said, hey, I live in Philly too, and I'm also a writer. We have a lot in common. <laughs> not wanting to ignore him, but not wanting to engage him further, I wrote back with something along the lines of, that's great. <laughs> he continued to write me every so often, and I continued to respond politely, but at arm's length. Now, I have my P.O. box listed on my website. So one day, I went to pick up the mail, and he had sent me a letter along with a copy of his first novel. This book was nominated for the New York Public Library Young Lions Award, and it was selected by Barnes & Noble for the Discover Great Writer series. It wasn't just any old first novel. My interest was officially piqued. I went back to his MySpace profile and started looking around, which I hadn't done before. The first thing I noticed was his status said, in a relationship, and I was confused because his emails to me were unmistakably flirtatious. So I wrote and thanked him for the book and said, your MySpace profile says you're in a relationship. <laughs> he replied, I am in a relationship, yes. Also known as a marriage. Oh. We were on life support when I signed up for MySpace, separated in the same house. I'm stuck here until I sell an another book, so out of respect, I put in a relationship. I hate that section anyway. We then switched from MySpace email to regular email and proceeded to get to know each other. Some days we wrote back and forth all day, and sometimes weeks went by between correspondence. At one point, I was applying for a fellowship given by the Pew Foundation, and he had received this fellowship a few years back. I wrote to ask for his advice on the application process. His suggestions were thorough and amusing. I responded to him, I love that there are two references to Pew orgasms in your email. One, spunking all over some poorly written travel log, and two, the committee will cream all over your submission. I must say I'm a little turned on. And apparently, he was waiting for me to say those exact words. He replied, I'm turned on that you're turned on. I know I'm turned on, but what are you, infinity? I love ugly words like nutting and spunking. I use them in playground, smart-ass fashion. If I'm getting my Barry White on, I use verbs like explode, buck, come. I love the word come the best. It's hot to me in any context. Coming is also hottest when the subject of the verb is a woman. I am applying right now for the Samara O'Shea Older Man Boy Toy Fellowship, <laughs> which shall pay nothing over the course of one to two years. My qualifications include I am cute and look younger than most applicants. I always smell good. I channel my immaturity into literary fiction and sex-obsessed witticisms. I like to make out for hours and will lotion your legs until we both hit the wall, slipping off the bed. As stated above, I most like when the woman visits Pluto during a romp. Wait, did I type out loud? I told him not only did he type out loud, but he went so far as to hit send. And there was no going back now. So he continued. I would want to study every part of your body as you lost control. See if your blue eyes get bluer, bigger, whether you look almost helpless and angry and owned it all at once, how you breathe, what you say or don't say, what you do with your hands and your legs. I would want to know where every secret muscle popped as they tensed and twitched and finally went slack. I would know every freckle and connect those dots with kisses. On the flip side of that, I would love to look right at you as I exploded, staring at you in your complete and total control. I want you to see exactly what you've done to me up close, bodies <coughs> violent and pushing, but the sweetest, softest kisses ever and confession compliments. You were going to make me explode, stuff like that. 
If we are in love, I let the I love yous rip, but desperate. Oh my God, I fucking love you. I fucking love you. You fucking own me. <laughs> then boom, saint statues spinning in space, orchids in orbit, the face of God extending across a kaleidoscopic horizon. <laughs> Oh shit, I typed out loud again. And now I am really in animal mode. I blame you. I wrote, you do realize we're having an affair right now. He replied, I do realize we're having an affair, but wow, isn't it incredible? We are the new Henry and Anais, perhaps, or two other writer sluts. <laughs> Almost their orgasms are so beautiful. I would manipulate that for you sometimes, get you so close, then stop, do that like four or five times, then let you explode. Watch your long body arch and contort and melt into the bed sheets. I am game for spending entire weekends with you seeing only the top of my head while I kiss your center with the tenderest tongue ever. And when you come, I want you to move your body on my face as wildly as you want to. I think your cum would be the holiest liquid ever. <laughs> and I would love for you to come on my mouth as I kissed you. I also would want you to come all over my hard dick too, but I mean that in the sweetest way. <laughs> Like when we are as close as we can be without passing through each other, and if we are in love like I know we will be, I'm going to beg you, please, come so hard all over my dick inside you. And when you do, say you love me, and I hope you're come as candle wax on my cock and that it burns and then it cools, but whatever temperature, it feels perfect. And you can do whatever you want, whatever you need to. Suck my tongue, bite my neck, carve my back up with your nails, try to break my spine in half with your long legs wrapped around my waist, curse at me or whisper, sing, whatever. Here's how I like to come, and it will freak you out in the best way. I want to kiss you the whole time I am hard inside you and pumping. I want to push hard, holding onto the headboard with two hands, and not pumping in and out so much as those perfect repeat grinds that make the mattress yield. But when I come, I get really tender and still. I want to tremble and look right at you and say I love you and say you are amazing, perfect, beautiful. When the explosion starts, I want to keep my hands on your face and grin and kiss you and buck with a machine rhythm as my cum explodes from your beauty, from my hard cock warm inside the center of your long and lighted body, which now owns me, my heart, my soul, and my dick, which will start to puppy whimper any time you enter my field of vision. <laughs> I suggested we meet. <laughs> offers to meet for coffee and he kind of ignored those and months later we agreed to meet at a party but he didn't end up showing at the time he didn't give me a reason and later he said it was just too soon after his divorce just a little more I promise of course I can understand that I only wish he'd said it before we made plans after being stood up my excitement over meeting him waned drastically some relationships are purely physical others purely professional maybe ours is meant to be purely digital we don't write as much as we used to, but to this day, if I sent him a text message, he'd respond in 10 minutes or less with something appropriately funny or tender and sweet. I must say it feels good, no matter where it's coming from. Yeah.